Amalgam Argonac Augur Metal is a heavily misunderstood mod in Warframe. The weapon this mod fits on, the Argonac, is an admittedly bad weapon seeing barely any usage in the past couple of years. What makes this mod so strong though is actually not how it interacts with the Argonac, but what it does to buff daggers, making them contend for the best melees in the game, and in my eyes, they do take that spot with this. Hello everybody, my name is Kai, and welcome back to Warframe. Today, I have a good one for you all. The two builds showcased today are honestly some of the most fun that I've had in Warframe, and also one of the most powerful setups that I've probably showed on the channel. So let's dive right into it. Recently, in a YouTube short, I covered the Vastalock with the mod Shattering Impact and how it allowed you to armor strip almost any applicable enemy, thus making them significantly easier to kill. You might be wondering how this has any relevance to this video, but the same concept of armor stripping that Shattering Impact gives is also granted to daggers by the Amalgam Argonac mod, only it is significantly more powerful here for a multitude of reasons. The middle perk on the mod reads that dealing damage with daggers will reduce armor by 6. 6 sounds like a relatively menial number when these corrupted heavy goons have over 8200, but this mod actually deals with base armor, which is the armor a target has at their lowest level, which is only 500 for these gunners. So when dealing damage with our dagger and the mod equipped on our Argonac, we strip these enemies armor just by damaging them. The armor stripping capabilities that this mod gives also extend to status types and their relevant effects. I'm sure you can all see where I'm going with this one. What status is also a dot and AoE? Gas. When procking gas on an enemy from your dagger, the gas cloud itself will inherit the armor strip and continue to do it, regardless of whether or not you continue to attack the enemies. Pushing this even further, gas clouds from multiple enemies will stack on top of each other and all armor strip at the same time, making enemies of any level just an absolute joke. And really, that's all you need for this to be good. It is just that powerful. Obviously, I have some crazy frame and ability interactions to show you guys, but first, let's cover our dagger of choice, the Inodem. The Inodem is an incarnate weapon, which does come with an entire suite of evolutions, but we will cover these later as they are relatively niche, and even without them, the Inodem is still a fantastic melee. Like all incarnate weapons, the Inodem has an incarnate form, which is activated by heavy attacking while at or above 5x combo. The incarnate form grants the Inodem an additional 3 meters of range, a 40% attack speed bonus, and an Exodia Contagion style in-air melee attack, which is really not that great and relatively niche, but make sure you stick around for the next build. Trust me. It also has two passives, one being a bonus 10% movement speed while it is being held, and the second passive grants you a stacking global damage reduction of 10% up to 4 times when getting a finisher kill. This is particularly good for the Inodem, as all daggers can force weapon finishers, which are different than Parazon Mercy kills. Any heavy attack on an enemy will open them up to a finisher for a few seconds, making this very easy to proc, although that is if the enemy survives the heavy attack in general, which is unlikely for two reasons. One is that the Amalgam combo is so strong as I have showcased, and two is that the stance mod for today, Pointed Wind, has a forced slash proc on heavy attacks with a 250% multiplier. Speaking of the stance though, let's look at its other combos. The Neutral E combo has a staggering 774% average multiplier with 4 slash procs, and the Forward E combo has a 560%, but the wiki states that its second and last attack deal bonus slash damage, which is always great. In game, the combos feel really fluid to use compared to the other two dagger stances, which is great as you will be doing a lot of swapping back and forth between the Inodem and your primer for this build. Personally, I do like to use Condition Overload on my melees as I don't have much issues just using a quick melee after priming with an epitaph, which is more than strong enough for this build, but if you want to go with just Prime Pressure Point, feel free. Being a melee focused build though, we are going to be using Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds together to boost the 22% crit and status chance the Inodem has to 118 for both respectively. We could use the 60-60 mods for Heat and Toxin to get our gas damage, but together they only provide 20% more status chance we are already above 100% with a high gas weighting, and as I said before, one proc on 10 enemies will all stack up on top of each other, making more status here negligible in favor of more upfront damage from Primed Fever Strike and Molten Impact. Primed Reach gives an extra 2.8 range at max, which does stack with the Incarnate Forms plus 3 for an absolutely massive 7.6 meters of range on a dagger. 
This becomes more impressive and useful when we consider that daggers have a 0.9 follow through stat. I like to use Organ Shatter for a higher crit multiplier and a Bane mod here, which works to double dip on Gas's dot and also serves as the biggest boost for our damage. If electing to not use a Bane mod though, you could slot more range through Spring Loaded Blade. Attack Speed also works, but both builds today solve that issue through outside factors, or even just more crit damage from Gladiator Might, which also gives a slight boost in critical chance. Paired up with the Anodem is the Argonac and Epitaph. The Argonac build is only Amalgam Serration for the extra spin speed, and then obviously we need Amalgam Argonac Metal Augur, as that is the backbone of this build, as I'm sure you understand by now. Epitaph is a bit of a different story. Both frame builds today do not use shield gating, so here is a generic Viral Radiation Primer, which also procs Blast and Cold, to give us 320% more base damage from just this weapon's buffs, not counting the multiple other status types that we will cover later. These builds stay the same for the next frame, so I will not show them again. For the first build though, we are going to be using Gauss. Gauss is an incredible melee frame, so go watch my Gauss video if you haven't seen it for a much more in-depth look at him. This build scales incredibly well when enemies are grouped together, so that the Gauss clouds can all collectively armor strip at the same time. To solve this on Gauss without a helmet, we are using his Augment Mach Crash which creates a vortex that scales off range that pulls in all enemies and ragdolls them anytime you crash into a wall while mock rushing. Besides that, kinetic plating is great as it gives 100% damage immunity while at full battery, which is very easy to achieve as melee attacks grant battery level, while the constant use of mock rush also contributes and frees up our Exilus for anything you'd like as it also gives prime sure-footed effects while active. Redline does a lot, but its main use is to grant Anodem an extra 80% attack speed on top of also the Incarnate form giving 40%, and of course it frees up Gauss's entire battery for that coveted 100% damage immunity. The extra casting and reload speed are not that useful, as Epitaph does not reload and I am actually unsure if Mach Rush does benefit from casting speed, so let me know in the comments. Our helmet is going to be Zata's Whisper which is a very confusing ability, but it has some unique interactions with the Inodem, especially for the next build. But here, it provides an extra status for condition overload, and also gives a separate damage instance, which means we armor strip faster, as we not only deal basically two times the amount of hits as normal, but this also introduces use to the evolutions Inodem has. Although you'll find that many of them are kind of niche. The first one though is just the generic incarnate form transformation during a 5x combo heavy attack. The second gives us a choice of plus 0.5 range, which is kind of not needed with all the other range buffs we get on the build. The second is a 25% buff at attack speed. The Anodem at base has 0.75, so this just raises that to a flat 1.0, which is nice, but it really feels like they had a 1.0 attack speed and then just neutered it to give it this. The 30% sprint speed also is just really useless, I don't, I don't see a reason to use this. The third tree gives us a choice of 60% more finisher damage, which is great as daggers can again, as I said, force finishers on heavy attack. The increase in range on the Exodia Contagion air attack by 0.5 meters though, again, really not useful. And the 5 combo for every 10 meters of continuous slide is… Well, like why? The fourth tree again has another useless trait with finisher on combo, only 20 is not great. Daggers don't have an issue of building combo, which makes the first trait in Karn and Imago also useless. Swooping Lunge though is kind of interesting, 50% more melee damage on airborne kills, which stacks up to 3 times. I actually find this procking though when I am not getting airborne melee kills, so a free 150% melee damage is really not that bad, so I like to use this one. And then for the final tree, we have Heavy Attack Efficiency on Finishers, this isn't a Heavy Attack build, so we aren't using this one. The third perk gives Combo Count on Ammo Pickup, again, no issues with combo on this weapon. And the second trait stuns unaware enemies in a 10 meter radius on finishers. Again, really just not that useful, but it is better than the other two and I guess does have a use on the build, so let me tell you why finishers are useful here. Mock crashing will ragdoll enemies and open them up to a ground finisher, which creates an incredibly strong gas cloud and will kill on its own, especially when boosted by the incarnate forms plus finisher damage. Pairing this with Zada's Whisper, and you just kind of evaporate all the enemies instantly, and that's with no priming. These ground finishers proc automatically if meleeing a downed enemy, so you don't really need to try for this, and they also give you that aforementioned global damage reduction. This is a cool synergy, but not needed in the slightest, but it also happens naturally, so there is no downside to it. For Gauss, build heavily for range to increase the amount of area we can group up with Mach Crash to 18.8 meters. 
This doesn't really scale any of our other abilities, but the 84% strength plus the 25% condition roll from growing power puts us above 100%, which is all we need for the 100% DR from kinetic plating. I also like to build for 207 duration as it makes kinetic plating and redline last just over 60 seconds, while Zada's Whisper lasts 72, which is really, really long. Efficiency at 100% works perfectly fine as you only cast Mach Rush, which does have its energy cost halved while in redline. And kinetic plating grants you energy conversion when taking damage, which, well, of course that happens all the time. Make sure you have Mach Crash in here for the grouping, your Exos can be whatever, and Rolling Guard is here for the iframes and status cleanse, but you may be able to go without this, although it's just really comfy for me, so I use it. Arcing Energize for even more energy generation, and Fury can be swapped out for whatever you want, but more damage is more damage, so why not? And yeah, that's the Gauss build, everyone. I've kind of been maining this for the past couple of days because it is just so, so strong. Gauss is really fun to play, and this setup just... Yeah, it just rolls everything. Honestly, really gotta try this one out. But if you're looking for something a little bit more interesting and perhaps even more powerful, you're gonna want to see this build. Some of the gameplay that I have shown is with Zephyr and makes use of the Exodia Contagion style melee that I mentioned earlier that Inodem has in its incarnate form. A lot of people overlook this function as it is really not that useful, but when paired with Zephyr and her tornadoes and Zada's Whisper, yeah, you just delete all of the enemies instantly. Now I cannot exactly explain why this is, but I assume it has to do with the infinite punch through the projectile has interacting oddly with Zata's void bubble and the tornadoes redistributing the gas armor strip so fast that the game really can't compute it all and just deletes them without even showing the damage numbers. On Zephyr, we build for max range to scale the pickup radius of tornadoes and airburst, while it also increases the size of the windshield turbulence provides, which gives her revenant levels of immunity. Dumping strength doesn't matter since none of these abilities require it to do what they need to do on this build, and higher duration means less casting of turbulence and zadas. Arcane Strike fixes our attack speed problems, a rolling guard is good for the iframes when turbulence runs out, Natural Talent to help with casting speed of Tornadoes and Turbulence, Grosser Projection in the Aura can be swapped out for literally anything else, as this build just runs on such a shoestring budget that high range is all you need for it to be good. Zephyr is honestly just super super broken, so yeah, expect a new player guide on her soon because damn. But that does finish up the video everyone, this is honestly one of my favorite strats in the entire game that I've been using solely the past couple of days. A reminder that I do have a Patreon and also now have the option for you to join the channel for $5 a month on YouTube itself. You'll get all of my videos ad-free on both platforms and it also helps me out a huge amount as I make these videos myself and this one took a few days to finish up. A massive thanks to Ward Platypus, The Mad Monk, Scotty Nose, Bad Robot, Jade Rabbit, Shrike, Raken, Sage, Serene Crane, Pretend, Seydu, and Ravemeister. Thank you so much guys, you're awesome. Down in the description, you will find the link there where my Discord is also linked where I'm hosting a special Hydroid competition where the winner will get 1000 Platinum, so go check it out. This is probably my favorite video that I've ever done on the channel. The editing looks great to me and the video itself is also super good conceptually, so let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Duviri is coming soon though, so expect a lot of Duviri stuff including a shorter video going over everything we know in the next couple days as the recent prime time was massive in terms of info and honestly, it looks really, really great. But I appreciate all of you guys so, so much. Thank you again for watching, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace!